Hi, I'm Jessie Daintree and welcome to the Brainstem Broadcast, where we bring you all the latest news related to science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Our first story this week is a sad ending to a beloved space probe. On September 30th at 11.20am GMT or 9.20pm Sydney time, the Rosetta space probe will make its final descent onto the Comet 67P. Rosetta has spent an amazing 12 and a half years in space and travelled over 7.9 billion kilometres. Rosetta was built by the European Space Agency and launched in 2004 with its sole mission to reach and study Comet 67P. After travelling for 10 years, Rosetta reached its destination and on the 12th of November 2014 released the Philae lander. This is where our story takes an unfortunate turn. During landing, Philae bounced on the surface of the comet before coming to rest. Following this, Rosetta was unable to get visual confirmation that Philae had landed correctly. This then led scientists to believe that Philae had been caught in a shadowy part of the comet. This became a problem because Philae's only source of power was from solar panels, and without a clear view of the sun, Philae would fail to power up. This theory turned out to be correct, and after three days, Philae went into hibernation. Now, not all hope was lost. In June and July of 2015, Philae briefly woke up to the excitement of all scientists working on the project. Now at this point, they still hadn't located Philae on the comet, but this certainly gave them a sign of hope. To the shock and surprise of everyone, with less than a month to the end of the mission, on the 5th of September 2016, Philae was found. And it clearly became evident why it was so tough to get communication. Philae had unfortunately landed in a dark crack on the surface of the comet, unable to recharge its solar panels. And although it's sad knowing that the mission's about to come to an end, at least we can be relieved knowing that Billet was found. So with a mission with so many ups and downs, it's only fair that Rosetta goes out with a bang. As Comet 67 moves further away from the sun, Rosetta will begin to power down. Before this happens, scientists want to get as much data from the comet as they can, and there's only one way to do it by a crash landing. As Rosetta wasn't designed to withstand gravity, as it approaches the surface of the comet, it will become crushed, not surviving the impact. You can stay tuned on all the live updates on the European Space Agency's Twitter. I'll leave a link below. Now, the other big story this week comes from SpaceX. Elon Musk spoke at the International Astronautical Congress on his plan to colonize Mars. Elon Musk went on to describe the two choices we have for the future. Those choices being, and I quote, we stay on Earth forever. The alternative is to become a multi-planet species. He then went on to explain his concept of an interplanetary transport system, the success of which is completely reliant on its ability to be fully reusable. Currently, the expected cost per person to travel to Mars is $10 billion. And I don't know about you, but I don't just have that lying around. A tweet from SpaceX quoting Elon stated, you can't create a self-sustaining civilization on Mars if the ticket price is $10 billion per person. Another tweet from SpaceX quoted, We aim to improve the cost per tonne to Mars by 5 million percent. In Elon's master plan, he wanted the ticket price to be as little as $200,000, the same as buying a house. That's cheaper than a house in Sydney. I might have to take him up on that offer. Now the key to this plan is making everything reusable, including boosters, tankers and ships. Now on the boosters front, they're pretty covered. But the tankers is a new idea. To reduce size and cost, to get as many people to Mars as possible, they believe the key is in refueling. On the trip over to Mars, they will refuel in orbit, and on the way home, they will refuel from Mars. Using this method to refuel, reduce the size of the rocket leaving Earth, as it won't need to carry enough to do a round trip. If they aren't able to refuel in orbit, the rocket will need to be five to ten times larger to accommodate the increase of fuel. If SpaceX's plan is a success, we may see people on Mars as soon as 2022. Now let me know in the comments below if you paid $200,000 for a trip to Mars and whether or not you think SpaceX is aiming too high with their timeline. Until next time, this is Jessie Daintree with the Brainstem Broadcast.